A reading from Luke's Gospel, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well now, friends, we've been talking these past several weeks, all throughout the month of December, throughout Advent, about the story of God and humans, the story of the Bible. And we talked about a problem that started almost right away, how God had created the garden and Adam and Eve, our first ancestors, and placed them in the garden, a place of beauty, and uh, how they were to walk with God daily, and, and they, were, they were created to love God and for God to love but that they chose selfishness. They chose to be their own gods. And how that introduced sin and separation from God, they were banished from the garden. Many generations later, God would choose a people that God intended to be a light to all the nations, the Hebrews. God gave them a leader in Moses who would lead them from slavery in Egypt and give them the promised land. And then God would give them judges and priests to keep order and also to maintain that relationship with the Lord. It gave the people access to God. And so we see the Israelites, and we're walking through the Old Testament now, right? We see the Israelites who are a chosen people that light to all the nations, given the blessings of God to bless all others. And they were there with a special relationship with God because God was their king. The Lord was their king. But then we see another problem. Israel sinned again. They looked at other nations. They were to influence other nations, not to be influenced by these other nations. God told them so, but they saw that the other nations had kings, human kings. They wanted one too. So, They said to Samuel, who was prophet at the time, give us a king, anoint a king for us. And it's so sad that, see, the people who were to be a light to all the nations, who had God as their king, God who had delivered them from slavery, who had given them the promised land, who had fought all of their battles, and one who had said, don't be like the other nations. See how when we choose our ways, when we choose our self-interests in front of what God has in store for us and for the world around us, it separates us further and further from God and each other. And so we see in the book of First Samuel, the Lord saying to Samuel, they have rejected me, the Lord, from being king over them. A 
Why replace godly rule with human rule? Why replace God as king with a human king? Well, it's the story of what we've been talking about this month. How God created humans with one desire in mind for relationship, for love, and how humans keep looking elsewhere. God would give the people a king. A bad king, in fact. Saul, he was not a good king. He was insecure. He wanted to feed his ego constantly. He was always concerned about what people thought about him, not about what God expected of him. And so God finally took the king kingdom from Saul and gave it to David, who was a good king, who had a heart like God's and yet still was human and sinned. And the consequences of David's sin would live on in the generations of the kings and eventually the kingdom would be split. The people would be conquered and exiled. Now for some of you, all of this is review. For some of you, you might be saying, oh, that's in the Bible? Really? It is. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful story. But it's also a sad story. The people are exiled, and they have now prophets that God gives them. You see, every time the people fall further and further away from God, God still gives them a way to come back. And so we have the prophets. Even in exile, even in Babylon, hundreds of miles from home, God gives the people prophets who will point to a return home, but even more so, will point to a greater hope. The Messiah, the Christ child. Isaiah talked about out of the stump of Jesse. Jesse was David's father. And Jesus, we just read in Luke, is a descendant of David. Out of the stump of Jesse, a shoot. We heard a moment ago, Isaiah also said, A child has been born for us, a son given us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And friends, this is why Christmas matters. Because humanity left to its own devices, we left to our own devices, will be stuck in a cycle of self-interest and selfishness leading to isolation from others and from God. And that just leads to more selfishness and separation. But God didn't leave us there. God's never left us in that place. God sent the Son to become one of us. And think about it. What greater, grander way to tell all people of the world that I am with you than for God to become human. God who doesn't have to deal with all the things that we humans have to deal with chooses to enter into our experience. What greater way to say I'm with you than to become human. Think about that. If you were God, would you do that? Think about it. But you know, these days when we think about Christmas, many in our culture think about many other things. A few years ago, one Black Friday in Orlando, uh, the Reverend Chip Blankenship talks about this. He wrote, uh, several years ago, customers in a national discount chain store got into a brawl over laptop computers. The story made it to the national TV news. Two men tackling another man and pulling him to the ground because he had cut ahead of them online. It was absolute pandemonium in there, said one observer. They were throwing these laptops 20 feet into the air and people were collapsing on each other to grab them. What would Jesus make of that scene, Reverend Chip asks us. Imagine him standing off to one side in his robe and his sandals. What sort of expression would be on his face? 
knowing that all that brawling was set off by his birthday. That's why those shoppers were doing it, wasn't it? Because they wanted to be first in line to honor Jesus' birth. Of course it wasn't, Chip concludes. They'd been looking in the wrong places. They'd been looking, seeking their answers in life in the wrong, wrong places. And you know, friends, Christmas can be a simple holiday with lots of benefits and presents and time off and even parties and friends and family. Or it can be part of the story, the part of the story that changes everything, depending on where we look. The angel told the shepherds to look in a manger. Did you catch that? We've heard that a few times this morning. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. You will find the child, but only if you go and look. Look for the child. The story of the Bible is the story of a God who keeps chasing after us to save us from ourselves, who loves us, who invites us to love God back and to enter into loving relationships with each other. Unfortunately, the story of the Bible is also the story of how we humans have a sad tendency to look for life and good things in all the wrong places. Let's stop looking for our own answers. Let's go to the manger and find the Lord. I pray that you all look for God in the right places this Christmas. And I pray that the love of the Christ child finds you. Amen.